how can businesses use TikTok to their competitive advantage? If you're looking at this as a business and how do I move more product online? How can I use TikTok to my advantage? I think that thing that people miss in terms of business is they get so focused on their product and how they're going to sell their product and product pushing and everything. Mm -hmm. Thinking about that, they forget that the reason to be on social media is to connect and gain trust from your customers, mm -hmm. not to mm -hmm. sell to them in that moment. Mm -hmm. The selling part kind of comes later. If you look to connect with people and share knowledge, figure out how to help them, how to give them tips, how to be somebody that they want to follow and know what's going on. And once you become that to them as, as a brand, as a person, as a business, you will eventually get them as a customer. There's so many people, influencers, people selling courses that say, you could do it, passive income, passive. Blech. You only need an hour a day. Oh. I say baloney to that. Oh. For folks that want to get into the Amazon oh. game, you really got to think about what you're doing. You you had some success, but then to sustain that, you need what you said. You need the support, you need yes. the operations, you need the logistics. That's what's going to sustain and keep it growing and yep. keep things organized. Otherwise, it just boom, boom. Okay. drop the knowledge. I love this pro tip. <laughs> Listening to. Welcome to What the Tech, your gateway to business strategies and tech secrets shaping today's workplace. You know, Dave, I am excited about today because we have kind of a celebrity on our hands here in this podcast episode. I'm honored and just thrilled and tickled about having Helen on today's show. Yeah, absolutely. You know, what were we what were we talking about earlier? Almost 1 million followers on I know. And Jesus and you know what? She's proof that you don't have to be 20, 24 to have success on platforms like TikTok. Now, she does shake her rump and I love that about her given that she's not 25. I'm not 25 either, so I, I she's giving me hope. I haven't done it on TikTok yet and maybe she give us some pointers on how to do it right. How to shake your rump and do it right if you're not 25. I'm sure there's a proper way to do it. Today, we're thrilled to have Helen Polisi. She's a dynamic TV commercial director, video content creator, and social media guru known as the mothership on TikTok and Instagram. Helen's an expert when it comes to crafting and compelling stories and authentic content. She's collaborated with major brands like Sensodyne, Blistex, NFL alumni, and bringing their stories to life across multiple platforms. Helen's career began in advertising, production, working with Hasbro and more. So she's a toy person. And I've heard something about a Furby or something like that. So maybe we'll get into Furby and see what that was all about. Her impressive journey led to the founding of Mothership Productions. And she also gained a prestigious Clio Award for directing a mini documentary for Runway of Dreams. She's also working on another documentary she was telling us on earlier in the green room. So she's got a lot on her plate. Helen's also one of the most famous TikTok teachers out there today with a massive following of almost a million followers and where she creates content, tutorials, tips, all kinds of tricks and hacks. And by the way, she's got an interesting story to tell that I want to hear about when she started her TikTok journey. So without further ado, let me welcome the Queen B of TikTok, <laughs> Helen Polisi. Let me I give you a proper so clap, happy. too. <laughs> Hello, Helen. Welcome. That was a really nice applause. Thank you so much. You no, made me laugh no through that problem. whole thing. Where Good are you, you checking in from today? <laughs> I am in New York City today. Oh, the you're Apple. in Manhattan? Mm hmm. Oh, wow. Whoop, whoop. Big yep. ups to, the, to New York, NYC. Absolutely. Love it. Love it. So we're so honored, like I said, to have you today. Did I did I get anything wrong about that? My or did gosh, I miss anything? No, you covered it. And I thought, how are we gonna get all this in in the next hour? But we're gonna do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> I was laughing well, at your dancing reference because I've always been I, I've always loved to dance. And yeah. it's funny that yeah, it's funny that you mentioned that about me because uh, when I lived in the suburbs, I had this idea to have a women's only dance night at my house. So I'm I'm well known in my former suburban town for these massive dance parties. That I, did too. <laughs> no, I, <laughs> I don't really have to talk about that on a podcast, but you you brought it up. The dancing thing. You, big you know what I. I, you know, I'm, I'm a reluctant dancer. Let's put it that way. When it comes to dancing, I, I can dance. I could do some moves. I did a lot more of that in my younger years. Uh, but, you know, I was never the guy that stood at a, at a dance party and just stood in the corner. You know, there's just too much. You know, as a matter of fact, 
I was in Puerto Rico. I don't know if you've ever been to Puerto Rico. So I had, I've gone there a few times. So I was at the hotel and as I was checking in, they were having a, um, you know, some kind of party and there was a live band there. I had never seen a room. So people were there with chairs and tables and eating. It was like a dinner, live music thing. And I walked in and as soon, like the beat went on, the band started playing salsa. 99% of the people went to the dance floor. Love it. I love only it. like one person was at their table. I'd never seen anything that way. Any, any oh, part in the U.S. To, I might need to move there. <laughs> Hablo espanol un poquito. So oh, I dale, 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 dale. <laughs> All right, Helen. Well, I, I'm so glad that you're a dancer and you want to share your journey. Let me ask you the obvious question that okay. I think I, I don't know the answer to, but people want to know, how did you get the name, the mothership for your oh. TikTok handle? That's so funny. It was it was a given just because my production company's named Mothership. And so we have to go back to why did I name my production company Mothership? Yes. And that started from uh, an agency I used to work for when my kids were very young. And my bosses would come in occasionally and they'd hear me on the phone trying to talk to the babysitter about what dinner or help the kids with homework over the phone. And they used to call me the mothership just because I was like, oh, she's, <laughs> she's, she's mothershipping right now. So it was this whole thing about what my other life was while I was in an advertising as a producer. So from there, when I decided to go out on my own and have my own business, I was like, what can I call it? And I hesitated on the idea of mothership because it felt right because that's what everybody called me, but it also felt like, oh, am I making myself into like a mom? Is this like not a good idea for a company name? And then I just ran with it because I had a very short time to make the decision. And they couldn't get it with an O. So I said, try it with a U and it went through. And that's how come it has a U, which I think yeah. was destiny. It's very unique. It. It's yes. so like, but it's, it's so, to me, it feels very on brand for who you are. It just is weird. And my daughter at the time, she was very young and she said, you know what I like about the name Mothership that you could make it any business. So if you decide to change from production, you could make, you could even have a bar named Mothership and it works. And yeah, I was like, right. oh boy, she was a forward thinker. She's always been creative. So she had that insight. You know, and that's funny. We were speaking with someone recently about branding mm. and how a brand, a good brand Crazy. can do anything. 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 It's very, very true. And it's worked for me in so many different ways. Even when I had my production company and I decided to, when I was traveling for work, I decided to rent my space to other production companies. So they would use the space and they'd be like, we're working out of the mothership. And that worked for them because there were production companies that were working out of another production company. Yeah. So it just worked for everything. It's just been, and then when I started my TikTok handles, I was, I was like, well, my, all my crew people call me, you know, mother or they're like the mothership, you know, they call me the mothership. So I'm just going to run with that. And that's how I started my, my TikTok handle and my Instagram handle. Listen, like your content, it comes with a lot of credibility. You know, when I hear mothership, it's like you can trust the source. I'm the boss. Yeah. You can I'm trust the, the source. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I really nerd out on what, what you put. Some, some of it's short. You know, I know that you're famous. You're famous for one of these. So if, yes, you're, so if you're watching us, if you're just listening to this on the, on the audio podcast, uh, Helen loves using her uh, like a stylus with that uh, that's made for smartphones. Yeah, and so I love this because uh, you I think you and I were talking per before, and you know you're you're known. That's almost like your calling it's card. My, now, it, right? it really is my. It has became part of my brand, and I will tell you why it even started when I was oh. trying to do the the you know, teach the TikToks and I have the two phones, you know, I admit it, I actually have a third now, but I have the two phones because I got to have multi cameras going on so I can point one at the other to show. And when my hand was on top, I was like, yeah, it's kind of covering things. And I just happened to have a stylus from, for some weird reason. So I started, I saw the first tutorial, I started using it. I was like, oh, you could see much better with this. Mm -hmm. And that's what I, but I don't walk around with a stylus on my phone. So people think, oh, grandma, she's using a stylus. Like, I get a lot of comments. Like, <laughs> like, I don't use the stylus except when I'm teaching you, kiddo. <laughs> I don't use it every day. <laughs> yeah, it just, I, I, and it became a look. Like I'm the teacher now and I have my like pointer. I don't know. It just, I just felt right. Well, I was looking at some of your content recently and I didn't realize that that was so intentional. But what I loved was it was making it easier when you were showing, it was a tutorial for, yeah. I forget exactly what it was, but yeah, you know what, that stylus made it much easier for me to, to see, what see I was doing. where you were going on the screen. <laughs> yes, yeah, good yes. Idea. It's, I'm the ultimate teacher. And I'm like, now if anybody pulls out a stylus, you know, they're copying me. That's yeah. the funny thing that happened about it is I became so branded from that, that 
anybody who does it now will look like a copycat. So yeah. it's no, like, that's why we can't do it, Dave. We we can't. <laughs> it, people will know that you are biting. You're copying straight from the mothership. <laughs> that's why it. I only use this here when we're not <laughs> filming. It's, it's for okay. my own personal edification. <laughs> but uh, I, I love that about you. And you know, something I didn't know until I, I recently heard that you didn't start off that way when it came to your content. You no. actually started doing some cooking stuff initially, yes. you know, so during funny. the pandemic. It's funny to think about this. So what I, the whole thing started for me on TikTok was when I finally had some time on my hands because the pandemic took, you know, stopped production work for a period mm -hmm. of time. And I was mm -hmm. like, oh, how am I going to be creative now? And I thought, well, I'll just turn the camera on myself and I'll do some things for, I initially was thinking of doing it mainly for Instagram. And then I decided to put it on YouTube. So I had a few recipes that we were all stuck at home and a lot of people were baking. If you remember that period of time. It's yes, funny. everybody. I was like, that's oh, that's what you can reach for, right? So crazy. That's what you, you did. And I started having these raffles. So I would bake the things, but I didn't want to eat them all. because It was just me and my husband. I didn't want to like <laughs> gain, gain 300 pounds. So I started having Sunday night raffles on my Instagram where I then would raffle off the thing. So I'd bake the video and then I'd post the thing and I'd say, whoever comments gets entered in a raffle. So I was trying to like increase the engagement and then give somebody, give people something to look forward to on Sunday nights where I'd go live and I'd do this big thing. I had a little, my little raffle bin and I wrote all the names. I do know how to write backwards. So I'd write the names backwards so that when I show it on up on the, you know, it, like it wouldn't be written backwards. Right. So I did, I did this whole process every Sunday and it was, people looked forward to it and it was something really fun for them to do or think about on a Sunday and then I'd ship the baked goods. So that was a funny little pandemic story. And then with those, with those, videos, I was doing a lot of my production tricks. So it's getting more mm. clever. The more I watch TikTok and saw transitions, I would hold up the eggs and then I'd go like this and then magically they'd be cracked in a bowl. So I was doing a lot of transition stuff. And that's when my followers started to say, oh, really, she knows what she's doing. And they were asking me, how'd you, oh, how'd you do that? And how'd you make that video? So I said, oh, I'll make a tutorial. And it was kind of a joke. My first tutorial literally says, so many of you were asking how I did this, which was one person. I go, well, all right, it was one person, but let's <laughs> a little, <laughs> little bit of artistic license with that, right? I know. It was so funny. And so that's the tutorial that put me on the map. And it had like hundreds of thousands of views. And then my following just like skyrocketed after you that. Know, I can and recall one of your earliest crazy. videos that I, that I I think I saw was, was on the stop motion. Stop motion. It was and, a big and one. And that was where I was like, holy cow, <laughs> she's doing this on a smartphone. Like, yes. like editing this could usually take hours to exactly. do. Exactly. Exactly. And I think what happens is because of that, I lived through production and I know what it's like to do that in a real production shoot. Mm -hmm. And so when I was able to do this with a smartphone by tapping, 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 and then it would edit it for you. I was as equally as amazed as people watching my, that video. I was like, look at this. It's like amazing. And my excitement, I think, becomes in, infectious to people. So that's why they kept watching because I was like, I'm going to show you because I couldn't believe it. Like, You can do this literally with this, with this effect on TikTok. And that was another one that really exploded me. And, and there was hundreds of thousands of followers after that. So, But it was really clever because in the comments, I listened to the comments and somebody wrote, our TikTok teacher is here. And I went, aha, mm, uh, aha. Mm. And I right away changed my name on my, on my page. And it says TikTok teacher, the mothership. So I wow. went, I ran with it. So I like to listen to the very smart people who make comments. There's mean people who make comments, oh. but there's a lot of smart ones. What do you, a lot of smart ones. What do you do with the mean ones? Do you ignore the them or do tough. you engage? I'm, I'm, always, mostly... I'm always conflicted because <laughs> trolls are out there. Sometimes yeah. I feel like oh, I'm going to do a go um, at it you know like, you go, go at it or sometimes <laughs> I've, I've heard the term dark humor so where you're like haha that's so funny i'm glad you put that comment or something like that yeah it, it's i'm very particular about how i handle that so mostly i don't like to give any credibility to it i don't even like to respond to it i like to mm. i like to let them think i never even saw it so i won't even you acknowledge it that. but then there'll be sometimes it's it's like oh i could use this one later and i'll do i'll use it to teach a lesson of like flicking a comment off the seat you know and i'll do something where i kick the comment with my foot and i use it for tr for trends when it's like a trend where it's like surprise surprise like somebody there's a trend i'm gonna post probably tomorrow where it's somebody put a comment up that actually was nice and it was like i can't believe this old lady's teaching us, you know, blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to do the one surprise, surprise, you know, like that. <laughs> so I like to use them to my advantage on a trend, but I don't, and, and then I particularly will cover up the person if I don't want them to have attention. So I censor the names. I don't even want mm -hmm. them to be, to be, uh, 
I don't want them to have the credit for even it. You know? I know, but you know what? So I'm going to have somebody somebody yeah. drop a little phrase that I like. <laughs> what, what, what you said here, though. Real life. This is real life. You know? <laughs> it is real life. It is absolutely real life. And, you know, when we started our journey online, it's the same in the pandemic, and just started messing around with what we had at the time. And slowly but surely, you know, uh, we started evolving this this podcast and other things that we do online. And, and I had zero experience. You know, I was yeah. very, very, very old. I think people would complain. Friends I knew, hey, hey, I left your message. Where? Facebook. How long ago? Four <laughs> months ago. Hey, I don't even check Facebook. What are you no, talking about? There's too many platforms. You have to really decide where you want to focus and then trickle it out from there. That's what I always advise. This is a pro tip. Oh, if there we go. One. Ori, hit us with a pro mm. tip. Let's get ready for a pro tip. Okay. Drop the knowledge. I love this. Pro tip is that you cannot be everywhere and be great at it. So you've got to decide where you're going to lean. And then you can put everything everywhere, but you can trickle it out from there. So decide what your first, I always like, what's your first lane? You hit it hard in the first lane, but think about how you're going to maximize it by being able to put it into the other lane. And that's really where, what I go for. You guys oh, there. Oh, man, you I look? love that pro <laughs> tip. Go to school, get your education, and... I love the sound effect. Oh, yeah, I think you're doing a great yeah, job with that. Ah, there we go. There, there we go. <laughs> yeah, boy. <laughs> you know, one of the things that, that, you're, that you're suggesting is to go deep, and, or I should say go and, 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 and specialize and, and knock it out on one platform. And I saw that you posted, and speaking of platforms, I saw that you posted something about Amazon and trying your hand at mm. that. You know, for us, it's like our backyard because we've been doing that for over 10 years. Yeah. And I wanted to just kind of understand what happened with that. <laughs> Why I hated like it. You, you tried it, you dabbled it, and we, eh, no, it didn't work oh out. Oh, my God. Don't want to spend a lot of time on this because it was not that fun. But I will, we, my kids and I decided, and my son has been always passive income, passive income. That's been his thing. And he's in his 30s. <laughs> and he, yeah, he listens to a lot of podcasts. And now he's a realist. But because really nothing's passive. Even when you're working on Amazon, it's like a lot of detail work and they don't have a mm -hmm. lot of support. So you're trying to figure out something and a product gets labeled and you have to make sure these labels get on. And then next thing you know, they swap the labels and your products are being shipped and they're wrong. We, it was horrible. But we had this great idea. And it was during the pandemic, actually, where we were, we love these uh, chair umbrellas. <laughs> so we were going to now instead the chair umbrellas we would get for the beach only were in solid colors. So I was like, oh gosh, my daughter's a great designer. She'll design a pattern and then we will just market these umbrellas, but we'll be the only one that that is a patterned umbrella with like a nice pattern mm. on it. And it literally we did it. We went hard and we sold out of the damn umbrellas. And we thought oh. we were gonna be an Amazon store. <laughs> <laughs> and so then we kind of got overzealous and instead of focusing and staying where we were, which was a successful, you know, umbrella business that was pretty handy. Mm -hmm. We decided, oh, we're going to do towels. I'm going to do tank tops. And we're going to, and we just, we went too, we spread too thin. None of us had the time to make it a full-time job. We were all working jobs. Mm -hmm. So it became a thing where who's doing what, how are we keeping track of all this inventory? Who, who's making sure that everything's updating when the things sell? It was really debilitating. And there was no, in my opinion, no support from Amazon. It was a nightmare. So okay. I, it was, I you spent so seen. much time on the help, Amazon help desk trying to get oh, people on. Oh, Nightmare. oh, it, it, it I is. It. It, I is it. it is totally, totally, it's a very difficult uh, <laughs> enterprise. And the reason I asked, I asked that story, because there's so many people, influencers, people selling courses that say, you could do it, passive income, passive, Blech. you only need an hour a day. Oh, I say baloney to that, oh. because... You, your story is again real it's life, accurate. It's and very, real life, very accurate. You know, and so for folks that want to get into the Amazon oh. game, you really got to think about what you're doing. You, you had some success, but then to sustain that, you, you, you need what you said. You need the support. You need yes. the operations. You need the logistics because that's what's going to sustain and keep it growing and yeah. keep things organized. Otherwise, it just boom. Yes, it'll, it's a business like up. any other business. It's not, it's, I'm going to call it unpassive income. It's the most not passive <laughs> yeah, income sure. ever. Anti-passive so, income. <laughs> unpassive. I just made up the word. Well, <laughs> and like you said, you know, it's, it's, it requires so much time and attention, you know, so yes. if you're, if, you know, you, we have our full-time gigs, pastime gig, it's still going to take another eight it's, hours a day. Yes, you know? it's really a lot.
we are we are all doing it. It's like picture picture a hectic workday mm-hmm. where toggling between applications becomes second nature. You know, examples, you know, like yes. we're we're having our team meetings, our Zoom phone calls, we use different CRMs, our email, our texting, personalized videos. So you know, switching in between all these different applications. But that's a cost. And it does, mm-hmm. and it's a, a constant, I think it escapes a lot of our radars that we're, we're actually spending a lot of time going in between all these apps. You know, um, the Harvard Business Review, they did a study recently, and they revealed uh, some sobering facts. Employees can switch between 22 different apps nearly 1,200 times a day. That oh struggling, it takes a huge toll, it increases stress, it's slowing productivity, and it's undermining our focus. Now, enter global tech worldwide with over two decades of experience in business communications. They've mastered the art of unifying communication tools from voice to SMS, video, email, CRM systems, and more. By integrating these systems, they can cut the clutter, reduce context switching, and unleash a more efficient, focused workforce. In this age of optimization, Efficiency isn't just a dream, it's your reality with Global Tech Worldwide. So if you're ready to liberate your team from the toggling text acts and supercharge your efficiency, take the first step today. Visit global-techtech.com or click on the link below in the description to transform your workplace. Your journey of streamlining your productivity starts here. Book an appointment and talk with Global Tech today. I tried to sneak that in. It seemed a little it. obvious, but I was trying to sneak that it's in. Smooth. It was pretty smooth it's there in the, in the it's onset. We get, like, <laughs> we get better it. at that. We're, we, before, you just say, here's a read. And then here's we read. got, yeah, you know, over time, getting it better, find the find the right time to, ke- I, to come in with, with a read. But for those that are, may have just popped in, we are talking to the Queen Bee <laughs> of TikTok. That's <laughs> Helen, also known as the Mothership. <laughs> on TikTok and Instagram. So we were just talking about, you know, passive, non-passive income. Technology equals time. (laughs) And now (laughs) you're going to save them the time. I love that. No, no doubt. And one of the things that, you know, I I think about how we approach TikTok and it may not be even the right approach. And then we have the, the, the mothership with us, but, you know, folks like us that are in sales and other businesses that are you know, trying to get the product sold through Amazon, whether it's a TikTok shop or otherwise. Helen, tell me, how can businesses use TikTok to their competitive advantage? How do you do that? What, what if I'm a business selling to other businesses and you, you know, TikTok, anything can be sold. Should I approach it like everything else? Should, you know, you, you, I know you were going to roll into some, some secrets here, yeah. but as a business, if you're looking at this as a business and how do I move more product online? How am I, how can I use TikTok to my advantage? Yes, it's a great question. And I think that thing that people miss in terms of business is they get so focused on their product and how they're going to sell their product and selling and product pushing and everything, mm-hmm. thinking about that, that they forget that the reason to be on social media is to connect and gain trust from your customers, mm-hmm. not to mm-hmm. sell to them in that moment. The mm-hmm. selling part kind of comes later. So I have not been selling anything yet. People are asking me, can I pay for you? Can I pay for your time? Can you, you know what I mean? So it's a perfect example of, of how it works in reverse is if you look to connect with people and share knowledge, figure out how to help them, how to give them tips, how to, how to be somebody that they want to follow and know what's going on. And once you become that to them as, as a brand, as a person, as a business, you will eventually get them as a customer. So I think people go so hard at first into this, like, What's my sales strategy and how am I going to, instead of thinking, well, what can I share with my customers about why I started this business? And all of a sudden, think about the people that have done that successfully by accident. Hmm. You'll have somebody that's like, my dad wrote this book and he feels sad because only one copy sold. And they make this like sort of sappy video about their dad. And the next thing you know, the dad's book is a bestseller. You know what I mean? Right, right. Because that's, right. that's what blows up. What, what gets traction on the internet is touching people and finding out how to touch them, whether it's emotionally or whether it's teaching the way I'm teaching people. And so they're connected to me. So creating those connections comes before selling to them as a business. And would you say that, you know, for, for a lot of people going into TikTok or other platforms, 
you know, they, they want to be another Kami Lane. They want to be a Mr. Beast. They want to be mm. another mothership. W you know, what's, what's your advice about that? You know, is it, is it patience and, 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 you know, keep, keep working the craft or, you know, or I'm waiting for that viral sensation and it didn't happen. So I'm going to quit. So should we talk the three secrets or is it too soon yes, for that? It's because a good one. It's a good one. <laughs> Ori, give us the intro to the top three secrets. Okay. Well, kept secrets, well kept secrets, gotta keep them safe and sound well. But secrets, secrets are just like, just like, like diamonds. All right, okay. Helen, that was you super are, cool. you've got the floor to go into, yes, the top three <laughs> secrets, right, All little right. John? Secret number one. That's right. Credible, be credible. So that's my first C. You want to be the most authentic self that you can be. And it's so difficult for so many people to be themselves. They get panicked. So they put that camera up and they're suddenly frozen in time. They can't figure out how to talk authentically or they're addressing a crowd of hundreds in their mind. And really the, the, the secret that I tell people is talk to one person, think about a connection that you're having. Think about the person who's watching. The person who's watching is not in an auditorium watching you on a big screen. They're usually on their couch in the bathroom. They're just, you know, maybe they're in their kitchen. They have their phone propped up. So really it's the one person connection that you need to make. So when I look at my phone, this is my imaginary friend. I am literally like, <laughs> hi, <laughs> hi there. This is what we're going to talk about today. And, blah, blah, blah. and I can literally be that. I can be my friend to friend on, on my device. So that's the first thing. And then when you do that, you become credible to people because you're clearly not scripting. You're not giving them a spiel, you're clearly being who you really are. And that's a really, that's the most challenging thing for anybody that first decides to put themselves on social media. And I remember the struggle myself. So it's, it's real. And it's even for the best of us. And I, that's number I, one. I, and I think, I think you had something like that about talk about, talk to the camera, like you're talking to somebody in that room, like a yeah. person, a and, person. And that to me, the light bulb went off. Like oh, I am going to talk to the camera and we had another guest on from another, from a, he, they make products, but he says, uh, he makes content. He says, yes, I'm talking to a soulless bottomless pit camera that doesn't respond, but you have taken the next <laughs> no. step, which is imagine that it's being one person. That's a friend. Person. Yes. Right. That's and a lot on, of people, I've noticed something uh, was, this was trending. People were talking about, don't, you know, don't look at the camera, look at yourself. And I'm like, hmm. why would that person give that advice? Because number one, I immediately see, and a lot of the celebrities do it. They love to look at themselves, celebrities mm -hmm. in general, you know, so they're looking down <laughs> and meanwhile, we're up here and they're looking down here. And it's strange to watch that because you know that they're not really, you know, in, they're thinking about themselves and what they look like. <laughs> I think it's kind of funny. I, I agree with that looking up towards the camera and thinking about if you thinking about not looking at yourself and critical being critical about yourself while you're filming. Just kind of forget about it and talk to that one person. It's hard. A lot of people it, can't do it. It is <laughs> it's hard and, and getting over that, you know, like I'm sure if we if we could flip the cameras around where you are and and see you looking, it's it's a weird thing when you're not used to it and you know you're talking to a thing yeah. rather than a person. It, and and it takes a I don't know, Mr. B said it yeah. takes a hundred videos for you to really start getting your groove on and figuring that whole thing out. Yeah. Um, and so you're kind of saying some of that, you got to get your feet wet and move yeah. on and, and try to get, you know, the, your presence and, you know, feeling comfortable. Now I'm going to, I'm going to have to give my camera a name besides. Give your Sony. camera a name, right? You can put <laughs> yeah, a little mine says Sony, but I don't want to call him Sony. <laughs> I'm Sonny. Call him Sonny. Or put Sonny. A sticker, put a sticker up there. And, and give you some I like that. I may, I may, I'm going right? to steal that one from you. It reminds so me. It reminds me a little bit of the, the the advice that we had early on in our career was selling over the phone, B two B sales, and they said, um, "Smile when you dial. Put a oh, put a so mirror that. up. Look at look at yourself when you're, Ooh, when you're that's on the great. call. Look at yourself. Smile and dial." And some would do it, some would not do it. It gets a little bit weird, but hey, if it works and oh, you can so come sad. off genuine over the phone, credible over the phone, if it, you know, if, if looking at yourself would help yeah. that kind of when I when I when I do audio sessions, I actually when people are doing lines and things in voiceover things, I always say, smile say it again, but smile this time. And you no one's seeing that person smile, but there's a smile in the reading once Isn't you put a smile on your face. Yeah. So it's so true. Wow. Yeah. I love 
You, and the other thing said, is when you think about people addressing a bunch of people, sorry to keep going. No, on no, no, go ahead. No, incorrect. we're here to listen to you. Okay. So that when, when you go to someone's feed and you go video to video to video, when you, if you think about a person that's always says, hi, everybody, da, 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 da. And they go on to their, hi, everybody, da, 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 da. You're wasting a bunch of time saying, hi, everyone. And then in your feed, if someone decides to look at all your videos, what are they hearing? Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. Like, (laughs) no, thank you. So I just think that there's so many reasons to just jump right into your topic. And and I've made a video about that and I have tons of people in the comments. So what, how should we start? Yeah. How should we start? Just take off. Hi, everybody. That's all you got to do. Just start with the next sentence. So if you you have to record it, go ahead. Just cut it. No, no, I was going to say, and you've, I I, I think you, you've, I think you, the last time you and I talked, you were talking about this particular challenge and you, you touched a little bit on the, the celebrity. And I know that you said you've had some of them reach out to you uh, that uh, want tips and pointers on how they can improve their online game. And, you, and to me, it would seem like people that are on camera all the time have I this know. figured out, but it doesn't seem like that's the case from what you're talking about no. on social media. No, it's crazy. Um, <laughs> this is really funny because Kathy Griffin, who, you know, the comedian, she writes me all the time when she has problems. She's like, I can't find <laughs> such and such. I get messages from her. I did have an experience that was interesting from when I experienced cancer, which we can go into separately. But when once I was in my TikTok journey and I had so many followers, I started to go blind and I was uh, soon diagnosed with lymphoma, which has had caused my blindness. I had my eyesight back. They get, got radiation on me right away. So I'm blessed to have eyesight return. Mm normal eyesight returned. But when I was going through that, I was offline for about two and a half weeks and people were messaging my, my daughter was looking at my phone at one point. She's like, Oh my God, people are asking, where have you been? Are you okay? There's people that account on seeing you every day. So what happened to me was I had waited till I had my diagnosis, which took about two and a half weeks for them to solve the mystery that was happening. And then once I put out I was recording every day. I was picking up my phone, even though I couldn't see it. And I was recording myself every day. And I wanted to document it for myself, but thinking, well, maybe at the end of this, I'll share it with my audience, what I went through. So I was doing this documenting for myself. And then when I decided, all right, now that I have the diagnosis, I have to let my followers know what's going on and what I'm going to be going through now. So we put together a seven minute video, my daughter and I, and we released it. We figured a few people are going to see it because it's seven minutes long. Who's going to watch that on TikTok? And it went viral. And I had so many people in the comments. And the point of me telling you this right now is that I had celebrities coming into my comments and Jenny McCarthy actually offered to edit my videos. I have the receipt. She's like, if you need help editing your videos, you can send me your content and I'll help you. What on earth is going on here? And I find this the most amazing thing about the platform is how we all become equal. So celebrities are equal to the next person who's posting because they're still mm. in their house picking up their phones, mm. as we all are. Mm-hmm. And so we we somehow have come to this place where there's no defining line between celebrities and real people because we're all watching ourselves in the same context and we're on our phones. So it was really a crazy experience to have that. And there was multiple celebrities. I'm still uh, the writer of the Fifty Shades of Grey, Erica James. She mess, you know, she's a friend of mine now. I, I could list tons of them, I'm sure, because if I go through wow. my followers, it's wow. really interesting how we've all, everybody is, we all are relatable and you never know who you're going to impact. So it's, I think it's just like a beautiful space to be able to be all equals. <laughs> what is that like to get love from mm-hmm. all these strangers around the world? Strangers. You know, yes. not necessarily so, celebrities, but just receiving you know receiving that, that heartfelt like are you okay i want to know what's happening um let me in uh, how does that how does that feel very overwhelming and without getting emotional about it it was it was hard not to get emotional about it because when i really think about it at the time i just couldn't believe what i was receiving i didn't feel worthy i'm i'm like what i'm getting People, strangers were saying they're sending me prayers. There was people who were following me to learn about TikTok. And then their their messages were, I followed you to learn about TikTok, but now you're teaching us the beauty of life and how to, I can't, it's so hard to say <laughs> yeah, it without getting yeah, emotional. Sorry, I didn't but it's just, a, it was a beautiful experience and it was an overwhelming experience. And I felt that it was part of my healing. So that's why I'm moving forward with a documentary about this, because not about me and my healing and how it happened, but how the power of positivity from strangers and people that you don't even know are watching you, how that can impact how you proceed with your, your health journey. It was just incredible. 
Yeah, that's wonderful. You know, we were chatting earlier about internet trolls, and it's nice mm. to know that the majority of people out here, out there commenting, Gosh. they want to be positive. They want to they, they want to be part of the story, but they want to be positive and they want to be a support mechanism. I think about some of the folks that I follow, not celebrities. Mm -hmm. And if something, you know, if they were to stop posting for a little while, I think I would notice and probably do the same mm -hmm. thing. Hey, where are you guys? Are you guys still mm -hmm. putting out content? You guys give up on that? Yeah. What's going on? I'm going to tell you that a very a, a strange aftermath of this whole thing is now it's a year. I, I was diagnosed back in June, 2022, and we're talking it's past a year now. Mm -hmm. I still get messages from people. And sometimes it's direct messages. And sometimes it's in the comments that will say, oh, my mom was just diagnosed with whatever. And she's been watching your videos to stay positive, And I've been showing her your feed. Mm -hmm. So the impact that those videos had is still lasting. So my sharing my truth, and picking up my phone when it wasn't a great day, because you know you can't just so show one side of it. If you're committing to sharing with people, it can't be a one-sided share. It has to be right. the full package. Mm -hmm. So there's times where I was like, I know I, I got to pick up and record this because people got to know that it's not it's not always great, you know, because I'm smiling and I'm dancing one day and I'm making you have the strength. chemo yeah, outfits. Yeah, Helen, <laughs> what 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 you, know, you you wanted to share the journey like you're talking about, but. And then, yes, you know, you had, you're like, yeah, I got to share, but what gave you the strength to oh, do gosh. that? Did you think that this is going to have an impact on, even if it's one person about your journey and you're going to do it. Yeah. And that's what motivated you, even though you were going through treatments. And I saw a lot of those videos when you shared your first yeah. one, I was like, oh my God. I was like, I, I, I really was floored. I I, I had some tears. I was coming crying. On. I was, yes, I, I was, was like, a mess. <laughs> And then you shared about your, your, you couldn't see, you know, and you had your daughter helping you with your, your, your social media um, stuff. But, but then what gave you just to, to yeah. keep doing and putting that out? Cause it's a hard time. Who wants to show their worst? Yeah. Like you're at your worst, your most vulnerable, your, your weakest. Why would you want to share that? Oh gosh. Two, two, there's two different answers to this. So the first is that by trade and by my day job, I'm kind of a documentarian. So the type of work that I do is storytelling work. When it's commercial work, it's usually real people interviews or documentary, mini documentary stories, like what I did for Runway of Dreams, which is their mini doc. So I think part of me was producing myself. So I was removed. And now this is a very weird thing to even admit, but <laughs> I haven't really ever admitted it out loud, except maybe talking to my daughter. But what, what happened is I could see from the outside that, I was creating a story for people or I was living a story that people needed to hear. And I'm like, how am I going to tell this truth? So I was able to remove myself from myself and say, well, I need to show this because this is part of the story that's important. And then I'm, I'm at radiation. I need to make sure people know that this is part of what the process is. This is how I'm going to hopefully get my eyesight back. And I knew that I might not get my eyesight back. That was part of it too. That was really hard to live through. So why I did it was because the response was amazing. And the support was amazing. And I felt like I need to include these people now. They're here for me mm -hmm. and I need to be, I need to be updating them. So I felt responsible. I'm not going to say obligated. I never felt obligated, but I felt that I had a responsibility to continue to share what was happening. So that was number one. But number two is I had this, this separate self that realized this is a story that needs to be told and I'm going to live it out loud and I'm going to tell it truthfully. So I have to put all of the elements into it. And so it wasn't an act. Obviously, when I was going for a spinal injection, I was really going for a spinal injection. <laughs> but I wanted to just share that experience for people. I always thought people who have cancer, they go away into a black hole for six months and do treatments. And I didn't know you could live your life. I didn't know. So I yeah, said, let that me That would surprise people. me. You were, you were a trooper. At one point, you were like, I'm just going to my treatment and do 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 And then an IV bag connected to you. I'm like. Yeah, She's and I went such live. A on freaking TikTok. trooper! I don't know if I could have done that. I mean, I, I look back on it, and I'm sometimes I'm like, well, "What was I thinking?" You know, <laughs> <laughs> but I did it, and I'm glad I did it. Well, I'm, I'm, I just, I just want to commend you for doing that. I, it is very touching for you to share. Again, it's the most vulnerable. A lot of people would not do it because it's not your most glamorous self, right? No, certainly not. <laughs> I look at some of them, and I'm like, I am embarrassing. <laughs> I literally can't even believe. And some of the times I put it out there and I have a relative that was like too much information, you know, one of those people. And I said, well, then don't watch. What can I tell you? This is what I'm compelled to do. And it was a self, it was something other was driving me probably inside some kind of 
feeling that it was a story that I needed to tell. So that was well, it. Well, I'm glad you told it. And, you know, like you said, there's people today that are stumbling on that. And that's kind of the way TikTok works. Sometimes you yeah. go in and start following somebody and you get a video from eight months ago and you're like, oh, that's the newest. And then you look at the feed and you're like, whoa, there's 40 other videos. Crazy. So I'm, I'm glad you shared that story. And I wanted to weave back into yes. the, the secrets so that folks yeah, that are let's listening to number to two. You, number two. So, Ori, let's put up that graphic so that we could get a story number two or secret number two from the. Maybe. There we go. Ooh, we have our second C coming in, and that is being consistent. And my word for this a lot of times is relentless because I am a not quitter. I am like, go, 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 go. When I get a video that I put out there and it gets 200 views and other people would be like, woo, woo, I got three videos in a row. They only got 200 views. Guess what I do? I keep posting. Nice. So the goal is to keep going and not constantly look back that. Why didn't that do good? You know, wah, wah, wah. And people like to complain about views. I've never been one to complain about the views. I just go and well, I guess that wasn't good. I'm going to post another one. And mm -hmm. if you just keep moving forward, you eventually will have success. It's inevitable. Consistently equals success. Right. And I, and I heard, I heard somebody say something that I would, I'd love to add if I could to what you said, because mm -hmm. it's absolutely beautiful. Consistency is like discipline. And then you add the motivation, right? The passion, uh -huh. AKA passion. So consistency is kind of the discipline of, I'm going to do it just like you said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you're passionate about that. That's like a huge multiplier effect. So the consistency is the, you know, I don't feel like doing it today, but like what you were saying about your, your cancer. I said, journey, I'm going to do it. Yeah. I but said, you're going to do, do it. it. You're going to do it and you're going to do it. And you know, it's the lit engine that could. So let's, yeah, yeah, yeah. No and let's jump into numbers. Let's jump into three, number three. This is an interesting yeah. one that you got <laughs> here for number three as a, as a secret. Go ahead yes. and put that up, Ori. Okay. Be creative. Now this sounds like, oh, how could you tell people to be creative? Some people just aren't creative. And the, the point here is not to look to other people and copy what they're doing and think that's what I need to do because they did that and that was successful. I'm going to copy them. There's so much copycat problems <laughs> in the internet world now, obviously with everything moving forward on AI and nothing is nothing seems original anymore. But I think the, the big thing is if you're always looking to other people to figure out what you're going to do, if you're not thinking for yourself, what would be interesting for me to do, then you're going to put yourself in a roadblock that you don't even know that you're doing. So you're, I, a lot of times, actually, I very rarely look at tutorials. Is that weird? Yes. Really? Because I have to be wanting to learn, but I mm -hmm. just feel that, you know what? I like to poke and learn and figure things out for myself and then find things myself. And then if a tutorial happens to come up off my page, sometimes I'm a little curious. I'm like, oh, how do other people teach this? And so I'll look at it for like curiosity, but I don't look to do I don't look for people and, and constantly harp on following people who are doing what I'm doing. But I think it's a distraction. What, what happens to us is we then think that their idea is our original idea because <laughs> it's, and you know, people, I know, mm -hmm. you know, you mm -hmm. know, people that think it's their idea. And it's like, mm -hmm. I said that like five weeks ago or whatever. And then all of a sudden <laughs> they, per they percolate along enough and it becomes, you know, their idea. And I don't want to be ever be that person. And I love to give people credit for their good ideas. So staying creative and think outside the box. How can I do this differently from other people? I, I picked it. up a stylus, not because I saw somebody using one. Just <laughs> I was like, how can I make this better to see? And I picked up the stylus. So my goodness, <laughs> Helen, you, uh, you are, uh, that's, that's just, that's, hold on. Somebody's going to help me with that. We the best. That's right. In this Ooh. case, the mothership's the best at it. <laughs> She's the best at the stylus with the teaching. I oh love God. it. I, I, I love the fact that, um, you know, you, you've come into this, you know, with, with fresh eyes and, you know, you've, you've been able to give, and I've heard a lot of people, this is all about giving and then kind of a give economy. Like Gary Vee talks a lot mm. about the giving and giving. I know giving. that's a big one on me. You know what? I, I just, I saw, I was, I don't know if you caught this with Alex Hormozzi's book when he released it. Uh, he talked a lot about this and then he ended up giving some of his books away for free. And then he's like, you know, your best ideas should be the free one because uh, it's only going to help you on the, on the paid stuff, right. That you're, you're sure. trying to sell. And you're going to gonna become the expert. That's exactly what Gary suggests. Like if you're the expert, they're going to come find you, you know, so that's what's happening. I want to talk about this whole business thing because so many people who blow up on social media think, how am I going to monetize this? I'm going to be a brand ambassador. I'm going to get yeah. sponsorships. How am I going to monetize? And I think 
being the subject of your podcast here, we should touch on that a little bit. Sure, like, why haven't it. I decided to make that into a business? And what happened to me that was a little odd is I was approached by a venture capital team and it was a studio and they wanted to help me create a business out of this. And a lot, and they did fund me to be for, with a business to teach older people in particular how to create content and how to become, to put themselves out there on social media. Right. And what happened to me is I soon realized that it wasn't just older people that I was impacting. So I couldn't just limit myself to this older audience because I have one video right now that has 1.5 million views and mostly teenagers are in the comments. Wow. They learn, they learned how to do this marshmallow game from my tutorial and they're all sharing it with each other, which is so funny to me that I was, I've actually impacted not even Gen Z, Gen Alpha. I mean, we're going, okay, <laughs> I'm down, I'm in, I'm in high school the right now. And I kind of love it. And they're like, I think our mom just taught us, you know, so cute but to them. I'm probably like, <laughs> but so, so the point is um, what I decided to do with that instead of what most people do, which is let me funnel, let me make a class and have people pay for it. And then let me try and figure out how to, you know, how the funnel thing is such a big yeah, so thing. Everybody talks funnel about people. the funnel, right? Everybody everybody get them here the and you move them there and give them, tell them the newsletter yes. and then sell them the thing. Yikes. So I, and I recently had someone ask me, I don't see what your funnel is and what you're selling. And I'm like, that's because I'm not selling anything. And I don't have a funnel for that reason. And I've thought about this long and hard guys, to be honest, I was almost convinced to do it. And then I started to panic. I felt like a strangulation feeling of that. This is going to have a hold on me that I didn't sign up for. I want to provide this information for free, create a community of people who can learn for free. There's people in middle, you know, in all parts of this country that they're not going to want to pay $500 for me to give them a course or something like that. I, and I still want those people to be able to learn. And the, a lot mm. of them are probably my favorite followers. Mm. So I'm not really, I don't want to be um, inaccessible. I want my knowledge and my sharing to be accessible to all. But obviously I'm a business person. So I'm thinking for the long term, if I create this newsletter, which I've done now, and it's, um, you can sign up for it at hellosocialize.com. So it's a weekly newsletter called The Creative Forecast. We send it out every Tuesday. It has trends, content ideas, music suggestions, tutorials, and social media apps. So five things in one newsletter. And then nice. that, at the bottom, you can submit a question. And then on the Friday issue, I answer questions of the week. So the hottest questions, the most relevant Ooh, questions. So we have awesome. a, a bot. It's like there a bi week. Well, yeah, there we for go. For those that so are have, watching us on the video, you could actually see what that looks like. And, and you could see I have tutorials posted up there and I have workshops. You, click on, if you click on workshops, I don't know if you can see that, but do you see a workshops link at the top? There you go. If you click on that. Right, click on it, Ori. Yeah, there you go. So now I have uh, our lessons and they're all free. You could click on any one of these, learn how to edit. You can learn how to do transitions, learn TikTok tips and whatever. So they're all there for the taking. And what my goal is to build an audience that really lo loves the newsletter, interacts with the newsletter, and eventually that becomes a business in itself. But it's not selling things to these individuals who are the subscribers of the, my newsletter it's eventually going to be advertisers so i'm going to be able to get advertising in the newsletters i mean that's just the oh, fact if I, once i have a large nice. enough audience the advertisers yeah. on on the website or advertisers that are sponsoring in the newsletter content. sponsoring the newsletters yeah gotcha, sponsoring the gotcha. content. and the that's goal here is think about morning it's it's morning brew and for social media nice nice i, I love that you know i i, I love learning in the, how other folks are because you, you, you do have a day job, right? You, you do, do stuff have a outside job. of TikTok. <laughs> and, and so TikTok isn't your, your, like a lot of folks are looking at it like, this is it. If I don't make it as an influencer. Oh, no. Right? Here, here's a curious thing. Visibility on social media will actually bring you work that you didn't expect. Because, mm -hmm. for example, me being visible to people who you know, I've shown up on clients feeds from 20 years ago. And I had this guy call me from my toy days, from my toy commercial days. He's like, hi, this is a blast from the past, but I feel like I see you every day. So <laughs> I'm on top, I'm top of his mind. He would never have remembered to call me about a project. Right, right. I, I just wouldn't be on top of his mind 20 years later. It's not reality. So putting yourself out on social media and being visible, really unexpected things happen and they are sometimes better than the things that you think were going to happen. You know, my daughter's like, you're going to be an influencer. You're going to have like clothing brands sponsoring you. Should you yeah, give really... yourself a time frame, Helen? Cause some people, you know, will say, you know, I, 
I've put videos, but I'm not getting to where the mothership is, where <laughs> she's enjoyed some success online and, you know, CNN interviews you and that kind of stuff. So is cool. it just like what you said in your tip? Just be consistent. It may happen. It is, consi- it is content or, or you consist- say, you know, give yourself a year and if not, goodbye. I think that you always have to reassess. You you always want to audit your content and say, what am I what am I seeing here and what am I not seeing? Why am I not getting more engagement? So there has to be periods where you spot check yourself. I okay. thought about it um, right before I was diagnosed with cancer. I was like, ah, is my content getting stale? I don't know. Maybe I should do. Funny thing, I said to myself, maybe I should do some kind of a documentary and post. <laughs> I mean, the next thing you know, I had my own documentary right. kind of happening in real life. But I I, I always reassess. I always think, oh, my, my tutorials, are, they're like the same every time. I always do blah, blah, blah. So I decided one day I'm going to just walk in and shoot myself coming in the door and getting to my tripod just for a change of pace. So always thinking about upping your game a little bit is important and, and auditing yourself. And you can listen to so many people out there with great information. Listen to what they're saying and you know, implement some of it. Try some of it. You've got to change it. If you're doing the same thing for a year and nothing's happening, come on, something's, you know, there's something wrong there. Mm. You need to, you need to change things up. Yeah. And we heard some, you, you, you're using a phrase that we heard on the last podcast with Nick from Amazon. He says the word they use internally at Amazon is customer obsession. You're saying it in a different way. Mm. You know, folks that are commenting, those are probably going to be the folks that are going to provide you the most insight. And that's kind of what he was saying. Customer obsession leads to those insights that, oh yeah, the, the teacher, the teacher of TikTok, right? So yes. that, that became your, your, your moniker. Yeah, uh, really and helped. I really, <laughs> I mean, it, it's, it's so awesome. So you just reassess and, and keep checking in on yourself. The, it, it, and I know we're, you're on time because you, you're such a busy woman these days. So we're going to wrap <laughs> so up here cute. in a little bit, but I want to ask you, because you said teenagers, the gen alpha, I didn't even know that that was the name. Are you, you create your content, but you're creating it with the lens that I'm creating content for people of all ages or because now you know that younger people are watching. Do you say, I'm going to try to go younger so it gets broader and, and redistributed more online? Or how, what's uh, your thinking behind that? No, I haven't really thought about it in that way. I think about it as what is the mass, what do the masses need right now? So there'll be, I'll see a trend and I'm like, oh, they're all going to want to do that one. I'm going to figure out how to teach it. Or I, so, and what interests me a lot of times. So I'll look at a trend and I go, oh, that was a really fun one. That'll be a great lesson. Because once people understand how to do that, they'll, you know, the, the snap transition, they're going to be able to do any hand to camera transition. I love the so swipe like, one you did the other day the with the comment. One. I was <laughs> like, gee, because I've respond video to comments on TikTok. I'm going to totally steal that one from you. Yes, swipe and the so comment comes easy. off. And then you can bring on a new one, you know? So yes. So no, I so love no, that I, one. I never know when a tutorial is going to hit for, I never thought I'd have to be teach the, the marshmallow game, for example, that's with the gen alpha right now. I never thought that would hit for young people. Cause I'm like, that's the game that they probably already know. So I was really doing that one for the older folks who might look at it and think, oh, I don't understand the pattern. How does this work? So that's why I did the tutorial. (laughs) I just did it as a joke almost. And that's the one that hit. You never know what's going to hit. That's the truth. You don't. You don't. (laughs) One of our best videos was from episode one, where we don't have this beautiful background, (laughs) lights and cameras and microphone and it looks so crummy and <laughs> yeah. so one of our best videos. See, it's you. it doesn't matter. It's just show up and put out good content. Can wow. I plug my podcast right now? Yes, whatever you want to plug. Where, plug. where can people, if where you want them to go and find you, whatever you want to plug, go for it. All right, let's go for it. So my daughter and I have a podcast. It's called Yours Truly with Helen and Julie. And it's mother-daughter authentic conversations. And we have different topics we cover. And we have 12 episodes in season one. And we're just releasing, we just released season two this morning. So that's exciting. So um, that's the first one I'd say. People who are podcast listeners, you might enjoy that because it's authentic conversations. We talk about social media. We talk about mom and daughter things. We actually had one where we revisited my whole entire cancer experience and from a different lens after the fact we have lots of fun topics and then everything else is found on hellosocialize.com where you can sign up for that newsletter you can get the weekly updates on social media and have your questions answered so those are my two go-tos and you know where to find me on tiktok and instagram at the mothership with a u wow those are my plugs (laughs) i love it i love it i had something else that i was there you go at the mothership your graphics are wonderful yeah, so that's, that's all of that is, is Mr. Ori Gallardo in the, in the, in the cloud. And he, him. he knows how he's been doing this for a while. So he's truly, 
one of the best. <laughs> and I wanted, I wanted to use that. I, 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 you know what? We're going to get an AI version of you. So you just like part of the crew from now on. I love it. I want to, I want to be one of your like giffies that shows up or something. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to figure something out. You better believe it. So if you see some snippet with something goofy and crazy with you on it, it's because you okay. gave us that idea. So Great. we got I license from here. I love it. You, you guys are awesome. This has been so much fun. Thank you I so love much. It. I love it. And you know what, Helen, I, I extend the invitation to yourself and your daughter. If you all want to come back as a du dynamic duo, oh. invitation is open mm -hmm. anytime you want to come back. That would be fun. I would love oh. it, actually. I feel like we have more to cover. We have to talk yes, about the Yes, yes, I know. I, I, have, I know. Screw the next interview. We, we, we got you for the next hour. <laughs> okay. <so. laughs> well, awesome. we've been talking to Helly Polisi where you can find her nerd out on TikTok. She is at the mothership on TikTok and Instagram. And if you've enjoyed what Helen's broken down for us, you'll want to go check out the last episode where we had another TikTok creator. We talked to Aaron Sogi about TikTok and his journey on TikTok. Go ahead and nerd out. Dave and I will check you out in that episode and we'll figure out how to bring Helen and her daughter back the next Thanks. round. So. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you so much. All right. Now, if you've been watching us on YouTube, go check out this video with Dave and I, where we will break down how to grow your business faster. So Dave and I are going to wait for you in those videos, and we'll see you the next time.